Hey folks, welcome to the Oakley Podcast, Trucking Business and Family. This is Jeremy Kellett, Director of Recruiting at Oakley Trucking, coming at you from Louisville, Kentucky, where it is all about trucking. We are here amongst everybody that knows anything about trucks, and uh, if you've never been to Louisville, Kentucky, at what we call Matt's, I recommend you put it on your bucket list to come see all the things associated with the trucking industry. It's just a fantastic place to do it. Always helpful stuff, always great people to talk to here. It's just something that uh, we do every year, and, and uh, we encourage everybody to come out and check us out uh, at Matt's, Louisville, Kentucky. So. Uh, when you're at a place like this, you get to meet a lot of people, uh, talk to a lot of people, and I have found a gentleman, uh, Troy Austin, with Talk CDL, and he has got a lot of the same interests that uh, Bruce Oakley has uh, in our trucking company, as we were talking before, about uh, helping owner-operators be success successful, helping truck drivers be successful, and that's, uh, that's something we always like when we find somebody like that. So. Um, you know, I invited him to come sit down with me and talk about actually his podcast that he has, uh, which, um, you know, has been around a while. And, and Troy, I appreciate you sitting down with me and visiting uh, and kind of putting you on the other side of the table that you're maybe not used to all the time. But uh, talk about your podcast. A used semi-truck is a great way to kick off your career as an owner-operator on a budget. And buying from a reputable dealer like Aero Truck Sales ensures you're getting a reliable truck that fits your needs. They carry trucks from all the major manufacturers in the trucking industry and perform a thorough inspection of every truck on their lot to ensure safety and quality and give you confidence that you're getting a reliable truck that will last you for years at a price that you can afford. Being a longtime partner with Oakley Trucking and the Oakley Podcast, we trust them to provide our owner-operators with a truck that fits their needs and matches our qualifications. So whether you're a first-time owner-operator or just looking for a new-to-you rig, be sure to give Keith Wilson and Trey Visor a call at 573-216-6047 and let them know you heard it here on the Oakley Podcast. If you would, introduce yourself to our listeners. Well, like you said, my name is Troy, and I am the host of Talk CDL. Um, we started the podcast nine years ago. Wow. Yeah. And we've had other hosts on, but the uh, main co-host is Ruth Ann, which would be my wife. Okay. And so, you know, she, she knows. brought her. Pardon me? Should have brought her. Yeah, she's here. Uh, but she's watching the booth right now. Yeah. So, um, but no, she's great. You know, she, she's great on the podcast because she was married to a trucker myself. And, uh, so you know. you drove a truck. I drove a truck for many years, and uh, I always tell people that behind every good truck driver is a strong woman. It takes a strong woman to be married to a truck driver. Ruth Ann was one of those ladies that raised the kids. If something needed to be fixed, she'd pick up a hammer and, 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 and swing the hammer and, and do what she had to do to keep the family going while I was gone because I was over the road. So, you know, when we started the podcast and she, we finally got her on, she was a natural. Where are you all from? Uh, well, originally, we both are from Schuylkill County, Pennsylvania, which is a little coal region in the Northeast. And we moved to Florida 24 years ago, and we haven't looked back. We've, we, uh, we've been just doing the Florida thing. You know, once you move to Florida from Pennsylvania or any cold state, it's hard to go back. It really you're, you're wondering why we, had, we didn't do this thing, probably. Yeah, absolutely. We love it down there. Yeah. Well, your history is, is in trucking. Then you, you, y'all got any family? I mean, I have family, you know, we have six children, six children, yeah, nice. six grandchildren. Awesome. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we still have some family in, in, I actually went to school in New Hampshire also, but family in Pennsylvania. And, uh, as far as, you know, trucking my whole life, like you said, yeah, my grandfather owned a trucking company. We were coal haulers and I knew I was taught how to drive a truck in a cab over and just from, you know, little kid up was going on trips with my grandfather. So, yeah, I've been in a, I've been in tractor trailers my whole life. Interesting. You didn't have a choice to hardly, did you? You had to, you was going to be a truck driver. Oh, you know, I, I love the smell of the garage, the smell of diesel, the smell of the grease gun. I mean, I, I mean, I just grew up, you know, so, so around it that you, you know, it's just part of my life. What do y'all do now in Florida in your spare time? Well, I mean, we we work. Um, we we owned a uh, a recruiting company for a long time, and uh, we, you know, started the the podcast nine years ago, and that's become a pretty big part of our lives. And 
R- Ruth Ann's a dance mom. You know, she's. We have one last child that's almost out of the house. Uh, well, who knows? You never know when I say that. <laughs> All right. But uh, we, yeah, we're just everything in trucking. Yeah. So the podcast. How in the world did you start a Talk CDL podcast? Well, what, what's the story behind it? The, what's the motivation? It's there was no motivation when I first started. Okay, my son. My youngest son came to me and he said, Dad, you should start a podcast with everything you know in trucking. And I looked at him and said, what's a podcast? You know, and so he told me and I was like, yeah, let's let's check it out. And so, you know, we went into it and I fell in love with it, you know, creating content. And then, like you said about, you know, sharing and helping, you know, really to me is is a big thing. You know, you got to have something positive in it, you know, and you also got to love what you do. And so we started this. The first year or two, and I don't think we had even really much of an audience. We really didn't. But we kept it up because drivers would write in, you know, that did hear us. And they'd say, yeah, we really appreciate what you're doing. You know, that was great advice, you know. And to me, over the years, what what has kept me going was drivers saying, hey, because of you, I got a CB. Because we're, like, we're huge advocates about the CB, you know. Uh, because of you... I, I started a lease purchase and I'm doing it right. Or because of you, I'm not doing a lease purchase. I went and got my own credit and got my truck and I'm doing it the, the way you really suggested. So when, when a driver, you know, emails us or calls us or shows up at the show here and says, thank you, you know, that, that keeps us going. And the motivation is, yeah, to help and really to entertain. You know, I, I love entertaining. Well... It's obvious you're good at it. You've been doing it for nine years, and the and the uh, podcast is doing great too. When it, it uh, when you get that feedback, you, you, I mean, I can tell already probably in your trucking career, you know, there's a camaraderie with truck drivers, and it's hard to, um, I mean, you don't want to get out of this business. You know, it's it's addictive to it what is. we do, <laughs> and and then uh, you know you're on the you you've seen both sides. I've just seen one side as, as never being a driver, but I. I so much appreciate what they do and and the job that they do. I don't know how how they do it, but uh, it, it it just the camaraderie with all of us to want this this in industry to be better, you know, and be represented better is sure nice. Uh, so I, I guess the the main objective to the podcast, I mean, is it is it just giving them good content or, or what is it that you when you look at a you go, hey, I. I might need to tell them about it, or no, I don't need to tell them about that, or what how, What drives the the content, Troy? Well, what I, you know, as far as the content goes, you know, we're at probably almost 800 episodes, so you're constantly trying to fix, we're once a week. I, believe it or not, when we first started, we were five days a week, and we would do 90, we would do 90 minutes on Blog Talk Radio. So the first year or two, um, if I don't know if you ever heard of Blog Talk Radio, it's a live podcast. You can you can have guests on and everything. But the problem with blog talk, the audio is the worst. I mean, they're, they're great people, but everybody would write in and go, we love your show, but we can't hear you right. It's like everybody, everything's, it was horrible. So flash forward, you know, uh, to your question, what drives us as far as content and everything goes, you know, we're constantly trying to come up with things and I, I try to see what current events are going on, you know, try to stay with current events. But I try to, a lot of it we try to use as a lesson to try to, you know, help somebody. Like make a lesson out of don't get caught in this. Don't get caught in that. We just did an interview with a guy that had a rollover. And, you know, and getting his advice on what could have prevented that. You know, that'll be airing soon. So we're always trying to make it a lesson, but we're always trying to make it entertaining, you know, and try to stay positive. And sometimes you can get. You, sometimes it could be negative. You know how trucking. Is. Well, you gotta. I mean, some of it is negative, you know. But they need to know about the negatives. Well, that's the tough part. You know, sometimes you're you're given a positive message, and sometimes you're saying, "Hey, guys, you need to watch this." And you know, this is your fault. See, not not every fault is the trucking company. You know what I mean? And and so some drivers will get a little testy, but a lot of drivers are really cool. They'll. They'll be like, you know, I'm glad you said that, you know. So, you know, we've never been a, we've never been a, I've never been afraid to hold back on what my true thoughts are on something, 
So, you know, love us or like us, that's who we are. Well, that's that's why you've been around for nine years, and that's why you're popular. Well, yeah. and, and I mean, that's the how do people find it? You know, you, you were telling me about Facebook, um, which I was going to get into later, but we'll go ahead. Uh, so it's mainly it, not much YouTube. It's all Facebook. Yeah, we are the we're the Facebook um, podcast because I, don't, I I'll be honest with you. I'm going to say 2016. I made this video. You know, we were I we were um, promoting the page, spending money trying to get our podcast out there, and then we had to tell drivers. Like I would meet drivers, and they go, "What's a podcast?" So you had to. You had to educate on every everybody what was a podcast, and they go, "So you're on the radio? No, it's internet radio. So you got to oh, okay. So you're not on Series XM? No, we're not. We're not on that. This is how we do this. And so podcasting had to grow. And it's still. I mean, I still have to explain. I, I agree, but a lot of them do know now. It's getting popular. And so, I'm going to say 2016, 2017. I made this video. And I put this compilation together of people cutting off truckers, acting stupid. And I titled it, A Trucker's View of Idiots. Well, I went to bed. Well, I I, I uploaded it at 4 o'clock on on Talk CDL. I went to bed. I woke up the next morning, just not thinking. I look at the video. I'm like, I wonder how many people watched it. And it said 1M. I went, that's a million. (laughs) This was not even 24 hours. By the next morning, it was at 7 million. Oh, my goodness. Within two months, it was up to 40 million. And th- that the reach on the insights was 100 million households. How crazy. Well, that propelled us because we went from 10,000 followers to 150,000 followers in two months. And so then we started being able to share things and then everybody started writing in and we were started growing and believe it or not, you know, it's, it's taken us an extra, we're at nine years and now we're at 400,000 following us and still, you know, we come to these shows. A lot of people don't know who we are and, and you know, it's fun sharing everything, but you, you know, podcasting is like you said, you're still trying to really promote the word podcasting and you said we're popular but a lot of times people humble me but going i never heard of you (laughs) so (laughs) some people say hey we love you guys and some people are like what do you guys do what is this yeah Yeah, i I get that all the time still what what are y'all doing here you know what is this Uh, you know and some people don't know it's just recorded and and then right you know you can listen to it anytime and you can go back and listen to all the episodes exactly and, you know there's just a lot of great information out there like, like we do too Troy trying to put out good information and I always try to remind them hey you can go back and listen to the you know to a lot of great episodes that we did which I've I've done some of yours looking back at some of the things that you've done which is great man uh, what are y'all doing here at the truck show? I mean, y'all come every year, Troy? Uh, we've been coming for the last so many years. Okay. Uh, you know, just we're basically promoting, you know, we network. We have a, we have a bunch of sponsors that, you know, uh, we've got sponsors like National Carriers. You know who they are. They're a big reefer company owned by National Beef. They, they're one of the companies that has been with us almost from the beginning. They've been sponsoring us for probably seven years. We love them. They've always had confidence in us. And they always say to us, we love it when a driver in orientation says, well, I heard about it from Talk CDL. So that's a good thing. Um, Carter Lumber is another one. They're a, a lumber company. They've got like 100 and some locations. Um, Truck Parking Club, which is here. Yeah, Evan, they're, right, right. they're yeah. super people. Evan's awesome. They're growing. They've been with us. They're on their second year as our, our sponsor. DriveWise is another one. So we network. You know, we're always looking for a sponsor or two. Um, you know, just to touch on it, when we first started podcasting, you know who Mercer is? Yes. Okay. Great people. They sponsored us for a year when we didn't have hardly any audience. So I, I, I feel like I owe them yeah. a plug because <laughs> they were there sponsoring us when they really weren't getting anything back out of it. And I so appreciate, you know, people that helped us, you know, to get where we're at. And hopefully we got a further road ahead of us. 
Oakley Trucking is a 100% owner-operator company. We specialize in hopper bottom, end dump, and pneumatic trailers. We provide the trailer free of charge, and you provide the truck. We have a large customer base that reaches the whole United States as well as parts of Canada. Our owner-operators live anywhere from Texas to North Carolina to Pennsylvania to Wisconsin and everywhere in between, and we get them home weekends. We take it seriously when you join Oakley Trucking because we need you to be successful. Oakley offers great benefits and competitive mileage pay, so you know that when your wheels are turning, you're generating money no matter if you're loaded or empty. We understand that you want to make a good living and that you make our living. We only take on independent contractors, and to be honest with you, we are very particular on who we lease on. You must have a good driving record, good work history, and clean, dependable truck. So if you're interested in Oakley Trucking or just want some more information, you can go to oakleytrucking.com, listen to our weekly podcast, The Oakley Podcast, and subscribe to our YouTube channel a little bit back to the content Go because ahead. that interests me a little bit uh-huh. finding good content uh-huh. i mean it is uh, you get a lot of it from your listeners to uh, some direction i do some yeah some some people will say hey will you um talk about this and then you know sometimes they'll say hey will you talk about this i'll be like did you miss last week's episode that <laughs> but you yeah. know i'm constantly reading trucking news you know and constantly you know, watching regulations, you know, like, for example, the uh, speed limiter thing is a huge thing. So that's a big topic. You know, hair follicle testing is coming up. So, you know, so you can find content from federal regulations to driver habits, you know, to the most dangerous roads in America. You know, we're always trying to be creative in that respect to where we're not constantly because I don't know how you are, but like we found ourselves in ruts where Hey, you know, I, I look back at the last seven episodes and I keep talking about, you know, you know, the clearinghouse and, you know, that's got to, it's got to, if I was a listener, see, that's the one thing that I do is put myself in their place. If I was listening and I heard the same subject five weeks in a row, you know what? I'm going to be like, you're getting boring here. Keep me entertained. That's, that's my thing. So I'm always trying to put myself in their shoes and I'm always watching. I'm always listening. I'm, you know, I, I talk to trucking companies all week, and sometimes trucking companies will give me content. They'll tell me a story about what happened with the driver. I'll be like, I'm going to use that this week, and I'm going to put that on. A, a company once told me, hey, we, we were doing uh, orientation this morning, and one of the drivers had a condom taped to his ankle with urine in it that he must have brought halfway. Oh, my god! Exactly. And I'm like, I'm going to use that. Well, it's like i'm going to tell drivers drivers you cannot put a balloon on your stomach fill with your wife's urine and think you're going to pass the drug screen because the temperature is going to be way off and so you know i'm trying to i made it into something positive so stay home if you got drugs in your driver you know don't show up at an orientation (laughs) please don't drive a truck (laughs) and don't drive a truck high i mean golly it's crazy yeah well i mean that's 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 stuff that gets out there i mean i you know, just by looking and listening to some of your podcasts, they're 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 all beneficial. You know, information and it's and I like the way you say it. You put yourself in in their shoes to, you know, is this something that would help them that you think they should know that I would want to know? Exactly. You know, I, I try to do the same thing uh, because there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff out there that uh, a lot of podcasts you just they grab what they can just to anything. You know, there's their goal is to get views and. Yeah, I, I tell people all the time because people say, "Yeah, I started a podcast and then I stopped." And and what they're looking for is views and numbers. And I tell people, I, I was two years into it without nothing, so you got to love it. And and if if and the other thing is, you got to be willing to put your heart on your sleeve and let the world see you like you in the raw. And and that's really where if it's coming from the heart, people know. You, that your podcast and your content and everything is coming from the heart and they can see if you care or not they can tell absolutely they can tell 100 even if they don't see you they just hear you they can tell yeah we get oh, that yeah. all the time i've been yelled at trust me there was a there was a time where i would cut ruth ann off a lot you know as we're talking and people would write in they go stop cutting your wife off <laughs> i mean they were mad i'm like i gotta because if you don't listen to your viewers you know, you're not going to improve. So your audience will help you with content. They'll they'll help improve you if you listen to them. So and that's what you got to do. You ever have drivers on? on oh yeah, all the time. Oh sure. No, well not all the time. I mean, I we have drivers that call in and and they'll do interviews with us. And then there's there's 
there's a, a lot of times where you know people want to get on and i just you know I, you know how it's like it is you know if you feel creative and you, you're in the mood to do it this way or do it that way it's just i just go with how i feel well there's there's i mean that goes without saying there's a lot of them that don't like the cut I mean, there's a lot of recordings that never have i was going to say that but you, you did instead okay thank you because <laughs> after it comes after you do it then you're like yeah i don't know that's not really the direction i was headed to. i had a driver call in super guy but he was so excited and and i'm trying to give him a recording and he's bouncing from subject to subject to subject and i'm like dude you got to slow down man and then after i played it back i'm like We'll, we'll have to do this again. I can't put this up. I, he's a really nice guy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring him on. I love the guy. Um, I had, I've had companies call in, and all they're really wanting to do is almost like an infomercial. And, I, and I'm like, dude, I can't. I'm not doing infomercials. Drivers will they'll write in and they'll say, I'm giving you a bad rating because you're boring. I had a German, a, a German truck driver call me from Germany because we have a lot of people from all over the world that email us, you know, Australian truckers, everything. And so we had a German trucker call and he did this interview with us. He was a really nice guy, but every, everybody here was writing in saying, next time I would rather hear somebody scraping their nails on a chalkboard than that interview you did. And I thought that day, I'm never gonna stick up something that I thought was boring. I'm never gonna compromise and stick content up that I don't like. So you're Just right. To have it. If it don't make the cut, it don't make the cut. So when people call in, I say you got it. Don't be boring, or you won't make the cut. I tell them that all the time. Yeah, and that, I mean that's good because you don't want to put that out there. I There's mean, content right there. Yeah, we get we get in situations like that too. Where, man, we're kind of struggling to get the right content. We're down to the wire. Mm -hmm. May not have anything for next week, but you know we try to find something really good. I'd, I'd rather not put out anything as yeah. I had to put out something. I agree, hundred percent. Before we wrap it up here, uh, you mentioned a big, big advocate for CBs. Oh, absolutely. Tell me more about that. Oh, well, you know, again, you know, uh, for example, uh, you know, I, I know a lot of trucking companies and one in particular in Texas, I'm very good friends with. He told me, he's a director of recruiting, he said, Troy, half the guys that show up here don't even own a CB. He said the new... And I'm not picking on new truck drivers. I mean, we were all new truck drivers at one time. We all had to get our start. But I talked to some of the new guys, and they're like, oh, I don't want to hear the trash on there. I'm like, it doesn't matter. Turn the squelch down turn and, and turn your volume up. Put your music on. And then if, if somebody's trying to warn you, at least you'll it'll come over, and then you can tune into that. And, and they'll be like, well, I've got apps for that. And I said, listen, there is no app in the United States or in the world that's going to warn you of something that just happened five seconds up the road that could save your life. And I promise you someday that's going to happen. And you're going to, in fact, I have drivers call me and telling me, listen, I was in an accident. And then after listening to your podcast, I got a CB. I wish I would have had one when I got into that accident. You remember the big pileup in Wyoming? So they could warn people yeah, yeah do you remember that and people were trying they're on the cb and they're saying slow down they're all piling up ahead they're piling up back it down eastbound or westbound back it down back it down well nobody backed it down and they, they've got this video of truckers just slamming slamming into each other well you know if you would have known five miles back you could have just said I'm, I'm pulling over it's going to be crazy down there so cbs are i think the mo one of the most important tools that a truck driver can own i don't care if you don't like the the foul language on there you we're men okay put up with it it's going to save your life someday and and i've had truck drivers say i've been driving for two million miles and i've and i turned my cb off 10 years ago and i haven't had an accident well good for you praise the lord man you didn't have an accident but i'm going to tell you something the majority of people that don't have a CB are going to find trouble someday because they don't have that warning. I'm serious. Traffic up ahead, uh, construction, how to get around things. I know Google's a great tool. I do know that. Okay. But it can't warn you a couple seconds up the road. It can't. Yeah. We, we actually, um, you know, when we, we lease people on a couple, several every week and mm -hmm. we have, that's part of our checklist. Do you have a CB in your truck? Really? Yeah. That's, that's part of our, expectations is you need a cb in your truck wow so we we make sure that they have it some of them have just bought a truck and they come to us we even have a cb guy that in the in the town there that we have on speed dial he has to come out in the evening 
you know, right before orientation's over and get them equipped with a CB. Tune and pick it and everything? Yeah. yeah. Uh, wow. Our, our, our nice. reasoning is a little bit different than yours uh, because ours is you gotta you got to talk to shippers and receivers. Yeah, that's true. In the bulk business that yeah. we're in, you've got to be able to talk to shippers and receivers right. on a CB. And, and that's the reason we... You know, require them to have them, but so we're doing our part, Joey. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad you are. I'm actually going to mention that on my podcast. How you guys have yeah. a a requirement uh, yeah. for a ZB. And how many trucks does Oakley have? Nine hundred. Nine hundred. And and it's all owner operators. All operator owner operators. That's that's amazing. I mean, and I'm surprised that owner operators would show up without a CB. Yeah, I mean, some they do. You know, I mean, because we've had to make it part of our checklist. You wow. Know, because they'll show up, and you know, like you say, maybe not. Maybe not young guys, but maybe first time. We do a lot of first time owner operators, uh, so they you mm. know, may not may not know that they need it yet, but they they need it for the business. You know, it's not just all about the safety. The, the CB is great for camaraderie. I remember driving, you know, from state to state to state, and and you you get with another driver that's going to be running the same way, and you got a conversation going to keep you awake. You know, it's the, the CB has so many advantages. I don't know what. The only disadvantage with CB is if you have sensitive ears to bad language. I, I, uh, CBs have been in my life since the early age. And I'll tell you this side story here. When I was uh, 16, 17, I guess it was, and I, I had a pickup. Uh, I had a, I had a, what year model was it? I had a, a B2200 Mazda pickup. Little, Oh, I remember. Little short bed. Good little, little trucks. Little, oh, yeah. Rusted and I out. had that sliding back glass, you know. Yeah. And I had my magnetic antenna I put on the top of it right I have there. One. Run my cable through my back glass. Had my CB mounted up here. Yeah. Where, and me and a couple of buddies, you know, we're from a small town and we'd get on those CBs so we could talk after school and, and uh, at night on the weekends. Well, even to top that off, my mom. Uh, had a base set up. She called it a base. It was a big, oh, I know what a big base box. Is. She had one of those microphones that you squeeze right here. It's got the big head on top, and she could talk to, on that thing. And she could talk. We could talk to each other if yeah. we wanted to. But she would get on. Have you ever heard of Skip Land? She uh, would get on Skip Land and talk to people in other states. Like through, a ham, re- like a ham a, operator. Through us, through the CB. I don't know how it would. Uh, hmm how it would do that but i always remember her you know sometimes being on was she a ham operator yeah ham radio it's like you have to be licensed know. you could talk no. from state to state i don't know huh? oh okay no she just had it set up in the house and we had it hooked to a big antenna oh yeah run up the side of the house you know and i mean it was something else so your mom got you hooked on cb yeah yeah it was funny yeah no see uh, real quick story i was uh had had the magnetic mount like you were talking about yeah. i forgot it was on my car and i went into a car wash yeah. <laughs> and it grabbed yeah. the cb and it literally snapped the coax crack right off and i'm and i'm like i pulled out and i look back and there's my my cb hang or my my antenna hanging and the cable was wrapped around the roller oh no it was one of those ones you drive through yeah, yeah. just rip it off that was end of that <laughs> end of that one. yeah I just pull out of the car wash and keep going. <laughs> Don't let them figure it out. Oh, it was embarrassing. But yeah. Oh, my. Well, great. I like that. That's something uh, maybe not everybody knows about you, CB advocate. I like it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's one of the things. Well, it's safety. You know, yeah. it's to me, it's all about safety out there. You know, I tell drivers all the time, the most important load you're ever going to deliver is yourself home when you get to your family. That's right. And make sure you do that. Um, we did a, an episode yesterday the average amount of people every day in the United States that dies is 123 a day. 123 will die today on average, over 40,000. You know, and if you're out there a couple weeks at a time, your odds are increased on at least seeing this stuff. So be careful. Be careful. Yeah, absolutely. What's the future look like for Talk CDL? You know, there's times where I'm like, you know what, I, I want to sell it, but I don't. You know what I mean? I'm, there's times where you're like, man, every week I got to come up with content because we hardly ever miss. When we came to this show, right before we came here, we put an announcement out. We said, hey, we're going to wait till April 1st to put out our next because we're going to be gone a couple weeks. And I ended up putting one up anyways the other day. You know, I did an, an, uh, an interview with OIDA 
and uh, on the speed limiters, I thought, this is great content. I'm just going to stick it up there for them. So I, did, I, I didn't miss a week anyways, you know. So we hardly ever miss a week. And even when we're going on vacation, I'm not. I'm, the one thing I will tell you about content, I don't like banking things. You know, a lot of podcasters, yeah. they do three, four in the bank just in case. I, I don't like doing that because I like to keep current. And so if I'm giving you something that I recorded four weeks ago that I maybe should have been putting stuff on there that I knew about this week, I'm, I'm doing you a disservice, I believe. That's the way I look at my, our podcast. So it's a lot of work, man. It's a lot of work putting your heart out. Well, you know that. Yeah. You, you create content. You're, you know how it is. So yes. do I get tired after nine years? I, yeah, sometimes you do. But like I said, the ones thanking you and saying, hey, great, we love you guys. We had a we had a, a, a guy show up yesterday. His wife baked us a cake here at the show. Wow. And it was like professionally done, like un, unbelievable. Ruth Ann put a picture up. So stuff like that says. That keeps you going. That I'm like, yeah, you know what? We'll, we'll keep going yeah. <laughs> for the cake. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. Well, man, I appreciate you sitting down and joining Thank me. you talking about your podcast what's the best way for people to uh, tune into it uh, you know we're on every platform um uh spotify iHeartRadio, apple is the big one um just talk, search for talk cdl talk cdl.com every episode is right on there you know it means we're if when you search trucking podcasts you know we're one of the ones that come up you know and uh you know tune in let us know if you like it if there's anything we can help you with if you want to message us messages on facebook um you know any we're 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 not hard to find so yeah absolutely Good. yeah we have, and i it was my pleasure i really enjoyed yeah. you know good stuff Troy. i really be, appreciate it. being on somebody else's podcast <laughs> so. yeah. hey guys thanks for listening to the open podcast we uh, appreciate everybody and all the comments you you uh, send us and be sure to check out talk cdl uh, great great uh, company great guy great uh, podcast that they do check them out and see what you think Appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week.